Hello and welcome to Warcraft Daily for today, the 28th of October 2013. So in today's news, we have a whole bunch of, um, all of news. And um, the first thing is there is data mined item scale, item level and player scaling tech for all dungeons that's in the game. Also, they are, there was a little bit of a sort of half semi Q&A thingy about connected realms. Some talk about high population realms and then just some general blue tweets. So the first thing is this item scaling and, uh, well, it's not just item scaling, it's also the player's character. Now, apparently this is including some spells at the minute, but it definitely seems like the system is not finished. And essentially what this does, um, first of all, I should say it was found by MMO Champion by the looks of things. And I'm still trying to dig into how I can actually replicate this myself on the PTR or just even in 5.4 itself. So I'm not really sure how this is possible, but it um, it's definitely a thing. I've seen their footage and yeah, it's, it's pretty legitimate. Everything's being scaled down, the items, um, the spell damage, all that stuff. And it seems quite cool. Now, the reason why this hasn't been put in the game, because Blizzard has been sitting on the tech, is that they haven't found a reward structure to put into the game. They don't want to give people valor for old content because then that means that running old content is a part of, like, PvE progression, and they don't really want that. I think they more want it to be an optional for fun thing, which I think is fair enough. Um, so, yes. Now, there is a data mine thing in the game files called a um, an instance type called Time Walker, and this could be, like, a, like, these systems could be intertwined, I suppose, but it wasn't actually officially implemented yet. Perhaps we'll find out more about this at BlizzCon. I could certainly see that happening at one of the gameplay panels. But for now, all there really is to know is that it's a thing, and, uh, well, <laughs> more on it in a few weeks, I suppose. Now, for Connected Realms, there's been, I suppose, some uh, miscommunication, well, not miscommunication, just people not really knowing exactly what's going on. So they said that um, if they're connecting PvP realms with PvE realms, then the faction balance wouldn't really be a problem because PvP realms seem to tend to be Horde, and PvE tend to be Alliance, but because they need to connect realms that are the same type, the population um, that will, like, the population increases mean that it's going to be very hard to address faction balance. Honestly, I'm going to say, if you're on a PvE or PvP server that has a faction imbalance problem, the chances of you fixing it are really not that big with connected realms. Like, I don't know, really, of many large, like, Alliance-leaning PvP servers, as an example. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of an issue. That said, I'd imagine that if they mix and match the right, very low population servers, they could probably make one half-decent population server that is relatively balanced, but I don't really think they'll be able to do that in a lot of cases. Also, they said that, that um, even if your realm has been connected, they're going to keep on adding realms until the population is healthy, and that can be multiple realms being added, so you could even end up in a server that has like four constituent realms or something like that. Also, with the realms that have been converted, and you don't see a massive increase in population, again, wait for there to be more, for there to be more realms. And uh, one of the things that was interesting that they said is they, um, they were expecting the realm size to be high in terms of the in-game client. Not big enough for queues, obviously, not, you know, definitely not that big but at least big enough so that everywhere, you know, the place is going to feel alive, vibrant, crowded. They've said that in a lot of cases, people who have been to high population realms and have ended up moving to a normal one don't find it as fun, even though they have less competition for, like, mobs and the auction house and all that stuff. Essentially, it's just more fun when there's more people. You feel like you're, I suppose, more part of a thing. Now, the next thing is just some general talk about the high population realms in general. There's definitely a few realms here that have got queue problems and things like that, and because the queues only happen on the high population realms, it means they're affecting the most people. Well, not most people, but, you know, they're affecting a quite a large amount of people. They said that they're not directing people into the high population realms, and that they're warning people against creating characters there. That said, they can't just lock down a realm unless there's extreme cases, I suppose. Um... So, yeah, what they've been doing is to tackle this. They set up free character transfers from the realm that has a queue, and right now they've been offering transfers to realms with a medium population, so it's not like you're going to be moved to a dead one. That said, one thing, people, as they said earlier, some people moving from a high pop, or, you know, a queue popped, I suppose, realm to a medium one are going to notice that it feels really dead in comparison to what they're used to. So I don't really think the free character transfer model of doing things is going to work. And also that when people am up to play in a realm that's clearly marked as full, they are warned that there could be wait times and uh, if there are queues and stuff, then they won't be able to migrate uh, any new characters into the server. So it's a bit interesting in that regard. 
And they did talk about adding more realms to normal, like adding, connecting more realms to normal realms, which is quite cool. At the end of the day, I think the optimal thing is that no realm has a queue and every realm is high population. That pretty much gives the best play experience for the most people. That's what it seems like. The problem is getting that, like how do you get people off a realm with queues? Well, obviously the queues are a massive sort of disincentive, but right now, moving from an ultra high one to a normal server may be a little bit of a gameplay hit for those people. Um, I'm not really sure if, like, if you do your free character transfer from a high pop to a normal, can you transfer back for free? I think you should be able to within a, like, a one month period, because at the end of the day, if you don't like the server, you should be able to hop back. I hope they do let you do that. Now, the next thing in today's uh, talk is blue tweets and that sort of thing. So, first of all, they said um, that the reason why the news cycle's been really dead is because they often talk about WoW at BlizzCon. That means we're probably going to, well, we are going to hear about the next expansion, and perhaps... You know, I th I'm pretty sure they're actually just going to keep any patch news or stuff like that until BlizzCon. It's a little bit annoying for me. I will we'll find a way to fill the next week or two. But uh, yeah, might be uh, might be two weeks before we start hearing major WoW news. That said, with 5.4.1 pretty much ready to go, the way is definitely paid for 5.5, and uh, I suppose 5.5 is going to contain things that maybe trans like transition us into the next expansion or at least start that process. So they're only going to be able to talk about that once they've announced the expansion, which totally makes sense to um, them talking about it at BlizzCon. They also said that they would like patches to be a little bit more directed than 5.4 was. I think that's a major problem with the Time the Siles. And um, there's, like, you go there, there's one daily quest a day, and that's really it. I mean, once you get all your, like, once you get all your stuff as far as chests go, there is really not a humongous amount to do, I suppose. Um, and that's definitely a problem. So I think they j basically just said they want a little bit more of a direct experience in future patches, and that uh, basically the Time Siles principles will be applied to something that's a little bit more directed, which means that there is definitely directed gameplay there, but there's a lot more dynamic things that surround that, which should, in theory, make it a little bit more interesting on the whole. And uh, the next bit's actually kind of interesting. They were talking about design and players, and basically when it comes to design, they said the players don't agree on what is fun, and that there isn't really an efficient way of communicating what's fun as a player. There isn't. If there's like a, if someone say leaves a giant long forum post, what happens is they maybe make a few good points, but they kind of it, basically things get lost. And also that's only one player. They would have to analyze six uh, like six million giant forum posts, which is never going to happen because not that many people will even post to the damn forum. So there's that, they also said that players are not great at predicting what changes they will like or not. This is absolutely true. The minute you start pandering to players and sort of giving up your own design is when a lot of the game becomes bad for a lot of people. You don't design directly for the players, you design a good game, then the players come. That's the way game design should work and, well, it's just, it's just the best way of doing things. A common sentiment in game design is that players know what they like but not always why and that may sound a little bit demeaning. But it is, in a lot of ways, true. Um, for an example, there's like there's a lot of say like RPGs where people have been like, "Well, I wish the stats were a little bit more like simple or not simple, just readable." And they wish that say there was more fast travel and a few different things. And once these are implemented, they realize, "Oh, it's kind of taken away from the game as a whole," instead of just making it a more convenient way to enjoy the same thing. If you see what I mean? It, it's very hard. And as a player, I think it's just. You have to understand that there's a big difference between game design from the perspective of the people running the game and the perspective of you, and that the things that you th maybe want in the game are pretty much just your own, and there's a bit of projection bias there, so it's a hard thing, and everyone kind of has to overcome it because it's just a part of being a human. So yeah, um, then also players are great at detecting problems, and much worse at suggest suggesting solutions. After reading a lot of suggestion, like forum threads on the various forums and MO Champion stuff like that, I can definitely say players are often pretty shit at coming up with solutions. But anyway, that's it for today's show. Sorry, it's a bit kind of crappy. Three hours sleep and I need to work all day, so that'll be fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>